Oh, welcome back to SAFC Live. We'll try and pick the bones out of that one, Danny. But a disappointing night down in West Yorkshire. Yeah, just didn't get going from the off, really. Sometimes you can have those nights as a player. And I said it, I think, at half-time, where maybe sometimes you can get away with one or two having an off night, but we had too many. Um, again, said it there, whether you talk about the formation, personnel, but it's just decision-making at times, too many touches on the ball. Uh, credit to Huddersfield, by the way. They set up really well out of possession. I thought organised well. Um, but at the same time, I thought we played into their, their trap in a way, really playing too, ma too many times through the middle instead of switching it out to the centre half, out to the other side and trying to stretch the pitch. Um, so, yeah, massive blow. Obviously, we'll see results that have come in as well, uh, but a big opportunity missed. Yeah, obviously, Huddersfield Town will be very happy about that. They pull away from the, the relegation battle, don't they, with that win under... Under John Worthington, who's doing a good audition, isn't he, to get the role himself? Well, there. two wins out of three and a half-decent performance down at Southampton, albeit they conceded five but scored three. Um, so, yeah, credit to him, you know, clean sheet for his lads at the back. I thought they deserved it. Um, what did they do to stop Sunderland getting their game going? Were they breaking it up in particular or was Sunderland the, the architects of their own downfall? Yeah, yeah, a bit of both, I think. I think they've done the homework. Said ball, every time the ball went out to Jack, Matty Pearson was tight on him, didn't allow him to get any space to turn and square him up and drive at him, really, 1v1. Didn't get the better of him too many times this evening. You could see Jack, he was frustrated. So but Thomas got back and helped him out, doubled up on him. One of the centre midfielders had come out as well. And that's what teams, when... when when they've done well up against Jack, that's what they've done well. Go back to the first game of the season against Ipswich. Uh, Morsi, I think every time Jack got it, bang, he was out there. Didn't allow him to come inside. So then we've got to look at a different avenue. How can we break them down? We said about the, the setup in the first half. I wasn't sure what the formation was. It looked like Abdullah Bar was playing just in behind Rusin. Job looked like he was out on the right-hand side, but then he was drifting in the pitch, so we didn't have any real outlet down the right-hand side. Then I think we changed it after 20, 25 minutes, and you see Abdullah Bar went out there. Setting off, it looked like a 4-3-3. Um, but sometimes it's got to come from the boys. You know, I've been there as a player. You're going at half-time. You, you know you've got a big opportunity. The lads will have seen the results last night. And you said, right, lads, big opportunity for us. Get back in there. We're starting the, starting the evening and back in ninth. Could have gone back to six. Um, and then at half-time, you get in there and you've got to get around themselves. I know sometimes it comes from the manager. And he said himself he had one or two words at half-time at the Stadium Light against Plymouth. But it's got to come from the players as well. They can sense it. You're out on the pitch. You can sense it. The ball speed's not good enough. It looked a half-decent pitch down there, didn't it? Yeah. Um, didn't move the ball quick enough. As I said there, we kept playing through the middle of the pitch. Three, four, five, six touches on it. Head down, getting caught on the ball. And as we see from the goal, we'll have a look at the highlights now. But yeah, we'll see from the goal, that's roll, how it came let's about. Let's roll the highlights and we'll pick up on some of those yeah. points, Danny, which you've been making there here on SFC Live. It's something just... They just didn't really get going, did they? Even for Bruce, and I felt sorry for him this evening. You see him there, he's getting the ball out there. We're, we're trying to get bodies up there and support him. He was feeding on scraps. He, he's a willing runner at times, we see it. Uh, yeah, you see that one there, that, sh that should have been a free kick. That's the only time to see Jack got the wrong side of Pearson on that occasion. It's an accidental coming together, but it should have been a free kick. Um, but no, you know, credit to them. And it's a frustrating thing is as well that they're a back three and I said we didn't drag them about enough. You know, get the outside centre-backs coming out of there. It was far too comfortable all evening for them. Um, and credit to them, you know, they've got some decent technicians. I thought Rudoni was decent at times, wasn't he? You can see he likes to get on the ball. So over Thomas on the opposite side as well. Um, drives forward and from where they are in the league, I wouldn't say they're in a false position because we're, we're a good... What, how many games are we into the season now? 30-odd games yeah. into the season, aren't we? So... They're there for a reason, but they have got players and they, they look like they want to play. You know, they don't just get the ball and shell it forward. They don't look like they've got a game plan about them. They look like they're quite confident and set up in the way they are. As you mentioned there, since uh, since the caretaker manager's taken over, they've had they've had two good results now, uh, two clean sheets, and obviously that one in between at Southampton at the weekend. It's only their seventh win of the season, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, six points taken off us. So massive uh, disappointment from our point of view isn't it and that's why I say games aren't played on, on paper and there's the goal now let's have a look at it so we take it quick you know that something's happening because you see why is Rodoni facing away from goal I thought I'd be perhaps going to split and Sober Thomas is then going to try and whip it over the, over the wall uh, but no they just shift it a yard it's pretty similar to us at the weekend in a way wasn't it where we just moved it similar position and obviously Pierre bent it into the bottom corner but it's a, it's a decent strike Anthony Patterson's Palmed it away, hasn't he? And then Matt Pearson's the first one to react. So it's a decent night for him. He's had a good game up against Jack Clark. And uh, he's, he's got the winner as well. So a good night for himself personally and, and for Huddersfield as a whole.
And certainly not without opportunities, but it just didn't click in that final yeah. third, did it? Yeah, but that, that's our best opportunity there, right on half time. It's from Dan Neal. It's, it's a short corner, isn't it? We had another one in the second half when he, he looked to whip it in the far corner. Decent strike, but it's a, it's, a, it's a half chance, isn't it? From what, 25, 30 yards? Keeper almost gets caught out, doesn't he? Slippy ball, wet evening, and he just about gets it round the post. See that one there? It looks like he's got the ball for me, but this one well, here. This angle, he doesn't. Oh, he hasn't, he hasn't got any of the ball. It's always that's one of them for me. If it's outside the box, I think he gives a free kick. There, he doesn't deem that there's enough contact possibly. But Karoma hitting the post that there. One off the post there, yeah. So they had they had some opportunities as well in the setting off. Let's not forget. I think we'll see the one that Joe cleared off the line as well. Lent into it. Is it handball? It's that old grey area, isn't it? Off the sleeve. We'll have to wait and see. Um, and then Jack driving forward now squares it. And then Joe, yeah, gets the strike away. Not troubling the keeper though. That one we seen at the weekend there when he wrapped it into the far corner. <laughs> Unfortunately, this occasion is straight down the goalkeeper's throat. Um, we were a little bit better in the second half, I'd say, where if you, know, if you want to gauge out of 10 in the first half, we were probably a four or five out of 10. We were pushing a six at best in the second half. We had a couple more openings. As you packed it, come on and give us a little bit more drive down the right-hand side as well. But it just wasn't enough. Uh, and you know, we, I'm, I'm not sure how many fans we had behind the goal tonight, two, three thousand, whatever the allocation was. <coughs> but they're probably getting back on the coaches now and thinking, what, what have we actually done in that game? You know, massive opportunity for us. Um, and I went really laid a glove on Huddersfield as such, really, for the team who were, who were fighting for their lives at the wrong end of the table. So looking at the stats from the game, Danny, as we watch some of these moments, that's the job one on the, yeah. on the goal line again. Sunderland actually shared in the possession 66% to Huddersfield Town's 34 but I guess it's what you do with it that counts. Yeah, no, I wouldn't have thought the gap was that di uh, different tonight, to be honest. I thought it was probably 50-odd to us. Uh, but yeah, as you say there, you're right, what, what you do with the ball, isn't it? You can have all the ball you want, but it's the tempo you move the ball at and it's what you do with the end product and there just wasn't enough. And the players know themselves now, getting back in there, long two and a half hour drive back or whatever it is on the coach phone. Now this time of night, one faces on the buses and they'll be thinking, looking at the table as we are. Look at the opportunity we've let mm. slide there now. What can we do? We've got to dust ourselves down, debrief it and we've got to get going and put things right at the weekend against Birmingham. Yeah, just looking at some of these exchanges as we move into the in the, in the second half now. Uh, Patrick Roberts coming on, getting more minutes. There was a moment in the second half when he felt like maybe things were going to turn a little bit. That Roberts was getting on the ball, yeah. Rusin was getting on the ball again, and Jack Clark as a front three. They were looking threatening, but it then just kind of faded out. Didn't yeah, click. Obviously, yes. Yeah, so I took Rusin off. Uh, Mundell come on, had a little spell in the middle there, and then obviously Mason Burst will come on and Jack. Last five minutes or so, when I had it, had to go on that right hand side, didn't he? But you see Patrick there, and here now, well, we talk about having a, a striker, you know, that fox in the box type of striker there, and that's what gets your goals there now. You see, with some rooting against Preston, prime example there. A few people saying that could have been a red card as I, well. I think, I think it's a red card, got to be honest. I think he's, you know, he's late, he's, he's boots up in the air there, catches him on his ankle, and I think it's, he's lucky it's a yellow, to be honest. First off, playing um, the through for Trey Hume yeah, comes that's pretty the close. Big chance, isn't it? Yeah, second half, that's the one. We actually worked it quite well. And Burstow slips him in there. Trey thinks he's done enough, but it's a, it's a good save from Nichols. Down to his right hand side, isn't it? And that, that one there, Pembelli, does he get a shout? You see Dan Ballard, he's on the stretch there, Pembelli. And does Dan Ballard give him a shout? Possibly, but sometimes you think, you know, it's on the head, I'm not going to let it go. We'll argue about it later on. Yeah, and late chances as well, Bergzoy yeah, coming on. quite lively when he came on. Yeah, yeah, he had one just before that, which was perhaps a better opportunity, which we haven't seen. Um, but yeah, and then Rudoni's on the follow up, isn't he? in case Anthony Patterson spills it. So yeah, but if you're looking at opportunities as a whole, they, they've had a few, we've had a few. Some people might argue we were probably good for a point at best, but from the levels where we've been at, and we know we can be at, we were nowhere Especially near. Especially that, that second 45 yeah. at the weekend. Yeah. Um, but yeah, let's look at nine, put the ball yeah, into a yeah, dangerous well, area. Got, well, just look at it there. So you've got your, cent you've got your centre half, I know last minute of the game, I'm not sure how he's, how he's ended up there, but you've got your centre off there crossing the ball. And, that, and now what are you looking for in the middle of the box there? You know, first of all, is he, is he going the other way? Is he then reacting a little bit later? I'm not sure. But somebody's got to be getting across there. We've had two balls go across there where somebody has got a tap in from five yards, getting on the end of things. So massive blow, big disappointment. Uh, what well, we got 14 games to go. Got to kick on, get yes. back to it. Let's have a look at some of your thoughts maybe at this point of the programme and see what you've been saying around the world on hashtag Ask Danny. Uh, what do you think Job's best position is, Danny? Uh, I would say he's an eight. Uh, I think in a 4-3-3, he's probably an eight. I think um, 
if you're looking at it from this evening, perhaps where he came on at the weekend, wasn't it? On, on the left hand side more so. Tonight, I think he's, it was hard to try and figure out the starting lineup. Uh, I, I'm not sure where we were. It looked like Dan Neal was sitting, Joe was it in the eight to the right hand side, Echo to the left. We didn't have anybody out on the right hand side, and we had uh, Abdullah Bar just in behind Rusin. So it was like we were sort of lopsided, and obviously Jack and his natural position out on the left hand side. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think I think Joe, if you ask it, he's an eight or probably a ten really. If you're in a four-two-three-one for me, that's probably his best position or in the diamond, top of the diamond. Um, a mixed one for him tonight. You know, he came on at the weekend. Obviously, what did he have? Seventy odd minutes on the bench. Come on, had a, an instant impact. Looked quite fresh. At times tonight, he wasn't alone. He looked a little bit leggy again. Got caught on it a few times. But you know, as I said, there Dan Neal, who was excellent at the weekend in the build-up to the goal for the free kick, got caught on the ball. Uh, Trey Hume, a little bit loose at times on the ball. So that's what I'm saying there. You can carry one or two players when they're having an off night. But we had Collective. several players yeah. in that team who had an off night all the long time. And that's what can happen in football. Let's have a look at another thought, if we can. This one's from Jay. says, do you think we are out of the playoff race? Well, we'll look at the, the league table in a, in a moment. Um, there's still a lot of football to be played, isn't there? Exactly that, yeah. I was just going to say, yeah. Still, what, 14 games to go. So a lot of football to be played. Of course, yeah, it's a, it's a big blow, isn't it? You know, said there they've taken six points off us, a team who are fighting for their lives at the other end of the table. Um, all you can do now as players, they know a massive disappointment. They feel that they've obviously let themselves down. They've let the fans down who have travelled. Debrief it tomorrow, probably. I'm not sure how the the sort of week works, the plans for them now, but yeah. got, whether they're back in tomorrow or not, which I'd imagine they will be for a cool down, the ones who played. Uh, and then you've got to work again for Birmingham now. Uh, Friday, get back to it. Focus goes on to there now. Another team who are at the other end of the table. I think they won 1 0 last night, didn't they? Had a good win last night, I think. Um, and that's all you can do. It's gone now. Put it to bed. Yes, we know we weren't at it. We weren't good enough. And we'll see what Michael Beale's got to say as well. And their focus turns to Birmingham. Yeah, let's have a look at what might be the final hashtag uh, from Luke, who says, Job and Neil need a rest. Uh, when do we need to consider rig starting games or even putting 09 back in the middle? Well, I can't see 09 being. <laughs> Put in the middle. I think his best position is at centre back. But uh, Chris Rigg, is that worth a shout? He came on and looked well at home, didn't he, at the weekend? Well, that's something he, he might weigh up. Michael Beale, yeah, I think as you say, he got what twenty minutes or so at the weekend, didn't he? Albeit, you know, we're in a comfortable position in the game of three-one up, and or was it two-one up? Sorry, when he came on because Job scored, didn't he? Um, not sure about. Well, he wants Dan Neal to come out of the side there. Well, Dan probably had his best game in a Sutherland shirt three, four days ago. So, yeah, he wasn't quite there tonight, Dan Neal. As I say, that can happen. Of course it can. But I'd imagine Dan will be back up there at the weekend. Um, again, Pierre looked a little bit heavy-legged at times tonight, so there wasn't that energy in the team. And obviously, we've talked about Job, Pierre and Dan not being at their best. Well, there's the middle of the park for you straight away. So you're losing that control on the game. Um, but, yeah, he's mentioned it, Michael Beale, after the game at the weekend. He said, he said I'm going to have to use all of my squad over the next three uh, next three games. So we'll have to wait and see uh, moving forward. Obviously, Pembelli come on as well down the right-hand side. Um, but will he start Chris Rigg? Well, it'll be his first start, wouldn't it? Uh, we'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see. Um, I think that's it for the hashtags. Let's have a look at the scores from around the grounds this evening in the Championship. Um, four other games. Uh, Plymouth Argyle 2, Coventry City 2, Preston North End 2, Middlesbrough 1, Stoke City 1, Queen's Park Rangers 0, Millwall 0, Ipswich Town 4, Al Hamadi scoring in the, uh, the, the very late moments of that game to make it 4-0. Um, I wonder if we can see the league table, what that does to the league table. So this is how it stands without that extra goal for Ipswich Town. It won't affect things too much from a Sunderland point of view. Sunderland down to 10th, Danny. Yeah, exactly that. Yeah, we start the night in 9th and we're looking there. Obviously, Preston nipped above us as well with a good win. Um, and the other teams there, Hull picking up points. Norwich, Coventry 2-2, wasn't it, with Plymouth? So that one's helped us out a little bit. Well, the, one of the but questions in, in the hashtags yeah. was, are we out of the playoff race? Well, well, it's only a point away, aren't we? Well, no, yeah, let's not you know, get too carried away. We're still right in amongst it, aren't we? As you say there, if we... Go and win at the weekend takes us to 50 points. I know obviously the other results have to go your way as well, but you're still right amongst it. You know, we're a point off sixth. Um, you know, who's got a game in hand on us there? You've got West Brom have obviously got a game in hand on Hull. Hull, Hull as well, yeah. I think Ipswich, you know, look at that cushion they've got on, what was it, 11 points on 
from West Brom. Um, they'll be in the playoffs. Those those four at the top there. I think that Leicester will win it. I think between Leeds, Southampton, and Ipswich, will will take that automatic place with them. West Brom will have enough, I think, to get into the playoffs. Um, and then it's you know you're probably looking at six or seven teams fighting out for mm. that sixth place as things stand. Uh, listen, obviously one of those could have a bad drop off, and then one of the teams in below them can have a have a good run right until the end of the season and get in there. So we'll have to wait and see. But there's still a lot of football to be played, a lot of points to play for. OK, I think we've covered everything here on SFC Live this evening. Remember to go to sfc.com to get your match day stream passes for Sunderland's next game, which is down to uh, St Andrews for Tony Mowbray's Birmingham City. Uh, Saturday the 17th, 3 p.m. kickoff for that one means we'll be on air from 2.15 on Saturday. It hasn't been Sunderland's evening, but perhaps it will be on Saturday. We'll see you soon.